of Water Resources Engineering Department invited participants from PJT1, Pusda Jawa Timur, BBWS Brantas, Multimodal Sediment Disaster Network, also the last but not least, professors, lecturers, and students of the Water Resources Engineering Department. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning. On behalf of the Dean and Universitas Brawijaya, I would like to welcome all participants of the International Workshop on Disaster Mitigation hosted by Water Resources Engineering Department, Universitas Brawijaya. This workshop is available under the scheme of Program Kompetisi Kampus Merdeka, Ministry of Higher Education, and in collaboration with Disaster Prevention Research Institute, or DPRI, Kyoto University. It is truly an honor and a privilege for us to host this program. Today, we are happy to have Professor Fujita, an expert in sediment disaster management from DPRI Kyoto University, that will share his experience in this research field to all of us. Ladies and gentlemen, climate change is an inevitable phenomenon. All countries must prepare for the impact of climate change. One of the negative impacts of climate change is the increase of rainfall. It may trigger disaster events, especially sediment-related flash floods, debris flows, and landslides, which accompanied by surface erosion. Through this international workshop program, we will have an opportunity to learn how to predict and how to mitigate the potential sediment hazards in our country due to climate change. In addition, we hope to gain <coughs> extensive knowledge in the development of an integrated disaster reduction methodology and education in related fields. Furthermore, we will have a research roadmap and advanced international cooperation among Faculty of Engineering, Unisas Brawijaya, DPRI Kyoto, and university and related institutions. Finally, I would like to express my sincere gratitude and appreciation to Professor Fujita and Dr. Usi Andawayanti for your valuable efforts in this program. I would also like to extend a special thanks for the committee for successful organizing this program. I hope all of you enjoy this workshop and have a fruitful discussion. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you uh, very much to Mr. Ishar Dita, PhD, for welcoming speech. Now, according to our schedule, we are going to continue to start this international workshop presentation and discussion from Professor Masaharu Fujita that will be guided by our moderator today, Mr. Dian Sisingi, PhD. The floor is yours. Okay, uh, thank you, um, Bu Rahma. Yeah. And again, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, very good morning to all of us. Thank you also for uh, Pak Isar Dita for uh, addressing the opening speech. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as introduced by the MC, I'm going to be a moderator for this session. And before we start, let me introduce to you our expert today. Professor Masaru Fijita is a chief for research center for fluvial and coastal disasters in Disaster Prevention Research Institute or DPRA Kyoto University. He has much uh, experiences in water-related disaster even in some disaster in Indonesia also. is one of the leaders in multimodal dis sediment disaster network. So uh, before we start this session, I'm also introduced the outline of uh, these uh, discussions. Uh, first, uh, Professor Fujita will present the material regarding the sediment disaster and future challenges due to the climate change. And then uh, we will have uh, discussions and also comment uh, regarding this um, uh, presentation also. Uh, now I think the participant almost uh, reached uh, 30 persons from the uh, 
uh, internal of uh, water resources department and also invited from uh, MSD networks Jasa Tirta and also some uh, uh, university also our college in some other university yeah welcome to uh, all of uh, you now let's start the uh, sessions please uh, professor Fujita to start your uh, presentation so we have roughly uh, two hours in total so you can manage uh, the time uh, by yours. Please, uh, Professor Fujita, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I am Masaharu Fujita uh, from uh, Disaster Prevention Research Institute of Kyoto University. Uh, first of all, I'd like to express uh, my sincere thank thanks for giving me this opportunity to give a lecture. And uh, I'm be, uh, it's uh, my great honor to join uh, your project. Okay, uh, just uh, uh, this time, so I will have uh, four classes and uh, this is the uh, first class. And uh, so uh, today I will use PowerPoint and uh, first I will give a short lecture and then so uh, uh, followed by uh, the discussion. Okay, uh, I will share my PowerPoint file. Okay, so everybody, can you uh, can can you look uh, look at this PowerPoint? Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. So uh, the title the title of the first class is uh, research is to be intensively promoted on sediment disaster mitigation and uh, climate change conditions like this. Uh, the contents of uh, this uh, class. Uh, first, I will give a short lecture and uh, for the next discussion. Uh, first, it's a typical, I will introduce typical types of recent sediment disasters in Japan and the global uh, warming. And uh, second is sediment hazard such as landslide, debris flows, and so on. And indices of precipitation on occurrence of sediment hazard. Uh, and the third is how does the pattern of future heavy rainfall change like this. Uh, after this short lecture, uh, we will have the discussion. The point is, uh, Just a moment. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, first one is how is the rainfall condition in Indonesia changing? And how is the direction of the change? Uh, let's have some discussion uh, regarding this uh, topic. And the second is what kind of hazard could occur if both indices increase? And the third one is what kind of researches are necessary to mitigate future huge sediment disaster? So uh, today's uh, contents is like this. Okay. Uh, so, the uh, uh, firstly, I'd like to introduce recent typical sediment disasters in Japan and the 
global warming. Uh, here, I want to introduce three patterns. Three patterns, okay? Uh, first pattern is uh, this uh, is the uh, huge sediment disaster. Uh, sorry. Uh, the, uh, this sediment disaster is uh, caused by Typhoon Taras 2011 in Key Peninsula in Japan. <clears throat> so this heavy rainfall is characterized by strong and very long duration. Uh, around two or three days uh, continued. And uh, as a result, we had uh, many deep seated landslide like this, and uh, we have the uh, many landslide dam like this. This is a first uh, typical pattern, okay? Strong and very long duration. Just. And the second one is sediment disaster uh, due to the uh, typhoon Weefa. 2013 in Izu-Oshima Island uh, near Tokyo. And uh, this rainfall is characterized by strong and quick increase and large amount of uh, precipitation. As a result, we had many shallow landslide like this and a huge flood. This is the second pattern. And the third pattern is uh, the local heavy rainfall 20, uh, 2014 in Hiroshima city. And uh, this rainfall is characterized by quick increase and very strong in a local area. And uh, we had a sudden landslide and debris flow. Like this. this is Hiroshima city. You can see many debris flow like this. Okay. Uh, but this is very, uh, this disaster is very local, okay? local area. Uh, area. Okay. Now, uh, please look at this figure. Uh, I want to show you uh, the pattern of these rainfall conditions, okay? Uh, first, please, so please understand these uh, axis. Uh, this is a rainfall intensity, okay? Rainfall intensity, uh, millimeter per hour. And the uh, lateral axis is effective rainfall with a half uh, lifetime of uh, 72 hours. Uh, this millimeter, okay? Uh, this parameter is like uh, cumulative uh, precipitation, cumulative precipitation, okay? But we, uh, uh, sometimes we, uh, we are using effective rainfall like this. Okay, uh, please uh, look at this uh, hysteresis. Uh, example one. Example one is uh, just this one. Uh, please remember, okay? Example one is strong and very long duration and uh, many deep seated landslide and landslide down, okay? Second one is strong and quick increase and large amount. Uh, the resulting, the, uh, resulting in many shallow landslide and a huge flood. And the third one is quick increase and uh, uh, very strong in a local area. Okay? This is uh, example uh, three. Okay, uh, example one is uh, hysteresis is like this. Okay? Strong, but uh, maximum is around 40 millimeter per hour, okay? Strong, but not so high, right? Uh, 40, 30 or 40 is not so uh, high, okay? But 
but strong. And uh, uh, effective rainfall reached to more than 1,000, okay, like this. This pattern, okay, uh, first example has this pattern of the rainfall condition, okay. Second uh, example, sec example two, uh, just hysteresis is like this. Quickly increase and very strong up to more than 100 millimeter power. And then decrease, but the uh, uh, effective rainfall is also very large. But example one is much larger than example two, like this. Uh, and the example three is the hysteresis is like this. Hysteresis is like this. And the quickly, quick increase to the high intensity <coughs> and the quickly decrease like this. Okay, so maybe you can understand there are three patterns in the recent sediment disasters. One, two, three, like this. <coughs> and the, just uh, looking at this uh, three pattern, uh, what kind of sediment hazard take place? This is very important point. Uh, for pattern one, uh, what kind of sediment hazard happen? This one, what kind of hazard? And this one is what kind of sediment hazard? This is very important point. Okay, so uh, during, uh, in this sediment disaster, uh, so uh, many sediment hazards uh, took place and uh, the, uh, took place, okay? Uh, for example, uh, just one of the sediment hazard, landslide is very important, okay? But uh, uh, there are many scales in the landslide, uh, shallow landslide like this, and the deep seated run, uh, deep seated landslide like this, and this is a middle uh, scale of the landslide. Uh, of course, the, uh, maybe you know the uh, shallow landslide that is the uh, frequent and small scale, but big impact in case of simultaneously and sequentially many landslide over a watershed. Okay, in a watershed, many uh, land, uh, shallow landslide uh, uh, take place. Maybe that is a very big impact to the uh, watershed. Okay. Uh, on the other hand, uh, deep sea to landslide is very rare but a very large scale and, uh, uh, and a big impact, even if a single event, okay? Single event. Uh, actually, in, uh, in the case, example one, a deep seated landslide took place. And uh, in the case two, on the case three, uh, shallow landslide took place. And uh, in this case, many shallow landslide uh, took place in this watershed. <clears throat> okay, uh, this is a landslide. There are many, uh, uh, what, what landslide, uh, to, uh, so, okay. Oh oh, sorry. Uh, next is the uh, other sediment hazard. I want to explain the uh, debris flow, debris flow. But this is the uh, simulation result by Dr. Uh, Takebayashi using IDIC software. Okay. So just I will show you the debris flow, uh, the origin of the debris flow, and the development of debris flow and the inundation process. Okay, please look at this. Uh, 
I'm sorry. ちょっと待ってください。Just a moment, please. 動画が動かんな。あ、uh,、just once I quit the あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、And the second debris flow is、uh, coming. And、uh, this is the second debris flow. And、uh, this is a third debris flow. Okay? Like this.、Uh, this is the、uh, simulation result. Okay? Okay, just one, one more. Uh, this, uh, there are two origins and flowing down. Maybe you can understand this、uh, debris flow is developing along that,、um, uh, along that uh, river, <coughs> like this.、Uh, just a sediment production volume by landslide is 2,000 cubic meter. To 3,000 cubic meter. Okay?、Uh, this is the origin. Original, uh, uh, the origin of the, this、uh, debris flow. And the、uh, sediment flowed into residential area is 34,000 cubic meter. Okay?、Uh, please compare、uh, between this origin and the、uh, uh, Final, okay? So,、uh, originally the volume is 2000, but uh, uh, the volume is increased by 10 times around like this, <clears throat> okay? So, because、uh, debris flow t a k e place and this debris flow e r o d e the bed material, okay, along this channel. And developing. Okay.、Uh, maybe you know the, uh, this uh, landslide. The landslide is the origin of the debris flow. Okay. And、uh, that,、uh, the occurrence of the shallow landslide is depending on the、uh, rainfall intensity. High intensity will cause the landslide. Okay. And,、uh, and also, I said the、uh, erosion, ero erosion is very important. Erosion is very important.、Uh, the volume of erosion, erosion, vol erosion volume is dependent,、uh, dependent on this、uh, water contents in the watershed. That is depending on the、uh, cumulative rainfall. Cumulative rainfall. Okay? What kind of hazards take place here? That is depending on the rainfall intensity. That is a trigger of the landslide and debris flow. And also the,、uh, depending on the、uh, cumulative rainfall. That is depending on the、uh, development of debris flow. Like this. Okay. Uh, the next、uh, sediment hazard is bed variation due to extreme, extreme heavy rainfall.、Okay. Uh, maybe you can see、uh, bed aggradation here.、Uh, this is a large sediment deposit by Typhoon t a r a s in Japan.、Okay. And、uh, this case is Uh, this photo is the、uh, tremendous sediment deposit by Typhoon Morakot in Taiwan. You can see、uh, bed uh, deposition depth is more than、uh, around 10 meters, 10 meters, like this.、Uh, extreme heavy rainfall、uh, could, could cause、uh, this kind of uh, huge, uh, sedi uh, huge bed aggradation. Better sediment deposition like this. 
on the other hand, uh, on the other hand, uh, downstream of the dam reservoir, dam reservoir, severe bed degradation took place. Severe bed degradation took place. Of course, the uh, uh, large amount of sediment uh, flowed into the reservoir. Okay, but the sediment is trapped in the reservoir. This means there are no sediment supply to the downstream of the reservoir. Okay, only the fine sediment, wash road and the very fine sediment, suspended road, uh, uh, flow down. Okay, as a result, severe bed uh, degradation took place. Uh, we should understand uh, during extreme heavy rainfall uh, in the upstream, uh, severe bed, uh, uh, bed degradation occurred, but the, uh, in the downstream of the reservoir, uh, severe bed degradation take, take place. Okay, opposite phenomena uh, happen like this. Okay, uh, next slide is, I just, I want to show you the, uh, another sediment hazard. And uh, now we Japanese are uh, 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 we Japan, uh, we Japanese have, uh, we Japanese have uh, faced this kind of hazard every year, okay? The, the frequency of this hazard is increasing in Japan. Like this. Um, maybe uh, and, uh, under the global warming, okay? So just I, just I want to explain. That is the large scale flood and sediment inundation associated with extreme sediment runoff. Okay. Maybe uh, during heavy rainfall, we will have the uh, flood inundation, flood inundation and also uh, sediment, uh, sediment also uh, will be inundated. Uh, flood inundation with sediment, okay? But uh, recently, uh, uh, recent in the recent sediment disaster, we have the uh, many uh, landslide. That means the uh, we uh, sediment production is very large. Okay, and uh, that sediment is transported to the downstream, and the uh, sediment uh, aggradation took place like this. Okay. Uh, please uh, look at this figure. Is the sediment disaster 2018 in the West Japan areas? Okay. Uh, unfortunately, so I took this photo uh, around two or three months after the sediment disaster. <laughs> so uh, local government uh, removed uh, much sediment from here. But the uh, maximum sediment deposition level is like around here, around here, okay? Uh, completely this channel uh, was buried with sediment, okay? So a large scale flooding due to much sediment deposition in the rivers and the subsequent flooding with a large amount of sediment. Uh, this kind of uh, sediment hazard uh, take place frequently, uh, recently in Japan. Such phenomena, uh, okay, uh, frequently occurs in Japan. Okay, so uh, just I showed the, uh, okay. Now, just to, uh, 
I want to explain the two indices of precipitation on occurrence of sediment hazard. Okay. What is a important parameter of the precipitation when we think of the future sediment disaster? Okay. Uh, that is, uh, there are two uh, in, in the indices on precipitation related to landslide debris flow. And the first is short-term precipitation, like rainfall intensity. Okay. If the, uh, it, it is very high intensity, uh, may, maybe shallow uh, surface flow occurs on the slope. And uh, this one is a road. Okay. And uh, a road and a uh, debris flow is happening like this. So uh, very uh, high intensity is very uh, important parameter for the debris flow occurrence. The other hand, the uh, water storage volume in the soil layer. Uh, as you know, the uh, this rainfall and uh, this rain rainwater is uh, um, going to the uh, infiltrate like this, and the uh, groundwater level is uh, rising up. Okay, this is a groundwater level, and uh, during heavy rainfall, uh, rain, rain, rainfall is infiltrated to the uh, underground, and the uh, groundwater level is rising up like this. As a result, this slope could be unstable. Okay, this slope could be unstable and resulting in landslide, landslide, okay? So like this, uh, short-term precipitation like painful intensity and uh, long-term precipitation, uh, that is a water storage volume, uh, these parameters are very important uh, for the sediment uh, hazard, okay? Uh, in Japan, uh, we are using the uh, soil water index as a conceptual water storage volume in the soil layer. Right? Uh, so, I mean, uh, uh, for, and, uh, for, for, for this parameter, okay? For this parameter, in Japan, we are using soil water index. Uh, but this is the uh, conceptual water storage volume in the soil layer. Okay, uh, this is the natural uh, system of the rainfall infiltration and runoff. Okay, uh, this is the uh, uh, bedrock. Okay, the river, and this is slope, and uh, there are two layers here, and uh, this rainfall, and the uh, rainfall is infiltrated to the downstream, and the uh, groundwater is formed, and the uh, flowed to the downstream. And also the shallow flow uh, appear, okay? If the uh, uh, rainfall intensity is very high. Uh, for this natural system, uh, we uh, we express uh, this natural system using a tank model. Uh, this is a three tank model. Okay. Uh, this is a subsurface flow model. This is uh, sorry. This is a surface flow model, and uh, this is a subsurface flow model, and this is a groundwater flow model. Okay. Uh, this is a rainfall and. Uh, so rainfall is storage uh, in, in the tank, okay? And uh, just some is flowed down as a surface flow, and some is infiltrate to the uh, 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 to the bottom, okay? And uh, also the uh, sub as a sub subsurface flow, the water is flowing down downstream. 
and the sum is uh, infiltrate, and the groundwater is uh, formed. Okay, uh, this is a conceptual uh, system. Okay, and uh, using uh, this tank model, uh, we uh, calculate the. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, S, S1 is this depth. S1, S2, S3 is uh, this water depth, water depth. Uh, we some, uh, we uh, obtain uh, S1 plus S2 plus S3, okay? Uh, this is the uh, uh, storage volume in the soil layer, like this. Uh, in Japan, uh, using the uh, uh, same parameter, uh, uh, we are using the same parameter for this tank model. Uh, we calculate this soil water index. Particularly, the uh, meteorological agency uh, calculate this index, and they uh, inform this soil water index uh, uh, they inform the uh, uh, local government and also uh, we uh, people of this soil water index. Okay. And uh, so uh, look at the, uh, uh, the, uh, the typical, three typical pattern I already explained, okay? Example one, two, three, okay? Example one is <coughs> something like this. Example two is something like this. Example three is something like this. Uh, these are the different patterns in the heavy rainfall conditions. And uh, maybe you, uh, uh, you remember a different type of sediment hazard uh, took place for this rainfall pattern, okay? Okay, so uh, how does the patterns of future heavy rainfall uh, change? Uh, this is very critical uh, question. Uh, and uh, now just I introduce, uh, introduce our sediment to disaster information system. Okay. Uh, this is rainfall intensity. I already explained uh, this is the uh, short term rainfall. Uh, just first index, first index. Uh, this is the uh, second index, second index. Okay. Anyway, using two indices, uh, we uh, predict, uh, we are predicting the uh, sediment disasters during the heavy rainfall. Okay. Uh, this is a critical line, very critical line. Ah, uh, sorry, not to This is a critical line for sediment disaster. Okay. So maybe you understand the, uh, uh, just rain will start uh, around here. Rainfall intensity is very small and the soil water index also very small. And uh, so then that condition is going this way. And uh, if the condition is cross over this critical line, uh, the risk of sediment disaster is in, uh, could be very high, like this. OK. And, uh, now, uh, before the global warming, global warming, maybe uh, the rainfall hysteresis is something like this. Okay, but but actually, sometime uh, we have the uh, very heavy rainfall, heavy rainfall. But generally, uh, when we have the sediment disaster before uh, rainfall intense. His is like this, okay? Uh, very quickly increase, okay? And a very high intensity, 
And the, this case is uh, intensity is not so high, but soil water index is very high like this. But each rainfall uh, cross the critical line. Okay, so sediment disaster uh, risk is rather high like this. This is a current condition or a previous condition, previous condition, okay? And now we are facing the global warming and also the, we, some, we have the frequently heavy rainfall every year, everywhere. So the hysteresis is like this. You remember this is a example one. Okay, a deep sea to landslide took place. And uh, this is a K example three. This is example two, like this. Recently, we have this kind of uh, heavy rainfall. And uh, also we have the sediment disaster. And the uh, frequency of these severe, uh, heavy, a uh, huge uh, disaster uh, is uh, is increasing, okay? Frequency is increasing. Okay, so uh, now just to, uh, I, we have just a, another one hour. Uh, just I want to have the fruitful discussion. And uh, here I will prepare for the point, uh, three questions. Uh, first question is, how is the rainfall condition in Indonesia changing uh, this way and this way or this way? Okay. And uh, how is the direction? Uh, direction means this way or this way or this way. Right. And the second Question is what kind of hazard could occur if the both of indices become much higher, much larger? This case is most uh, dangerous case. No? Uh, of course, this case is very dangerous and this also, but both if the both indices increase like this, maybe uh, sediment disaster could be very, uh, very huge, okay? Huge and very wide, likely. So what kind of hazard could occur if the both of indices become much larger? And the third point is what kind of research is necessary to mitigate future uh, huge sediment disaster? So uh, we are uh, considering uh, these uh, uh, questions. And uh, finally, just uh, it's very nice to pick up some uh, future researches like this. Okay, uh, just uh, I will close the just first part of my class. And uh, next, uh, I want to have the uh, fruitful discussion. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, Prof. Uchita, for very nice and important introduction of the knowledge on how to identify the potential disaster in the future due to the uh, climate change, as shown in the two indices of the rainfall, uh, the intensity and also uh, soil water index. So, um, in our discussion. I think some participants are also have uh, expertise in hydrology, in uh, yeah, hydraulic also, in debris also. So it's better we can have some uh, common also or some uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I mean uh, some uh, common regarding the trends of our uh, climate change in our country. So probably 
agency here some participant Pak Doni Pak Doni is the expert of the hydrology and the hydrologist so Pak Doni maybe first you can give your uh, opinion regarding the trend of the future rainfall intensity how is the uh, duration and also uh, yeah, the intensity and according to the indices already uh, introduced by Professor, uh, Professor Fujita in which direction it will be going on yeah. so then we can move to the next uh, question what kind of uh, potential disaster may be happen in future and uh, what kind of research also we have to prepare or some others participant also if you like to have some comment also please uh, uh, have comment and also suggestion for us also but do do you have any suggestion for the uh, trend of the future climate change in our country okay <clears throat> thank you very much for dnc singe bismillahirrahmanirrahim assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh can you hear my voice Pak singe it's clear yes it's clear okay thank you very much on my honor Professor Masaru Fujita, thank you very much for giving us a lecture. We have a new knowledge about the types of landslide. Yes, it's very new. For me, we have a deep-seated, shallow, and sudden landslide. Yes, uh, it's very interesting that we have uh, two factors, main factors. In this case, is uh, and for intensity and also the soil water index. And regarding uh, our discussion, the point one of the discussion, uh, how is the rainfall condition in Indonesia? Yes, um, actually, I try to uh, um, try to observe yeah, one of uh, some uh, occurrences of uh, landslide. Sorry, flood. Yes, uh, flash flood or flash, yes, flash flash flood yes, in some parts in Indonesia, and uh, as you know that. Uh, uh, 2020 and 2021 is the the most uh, the the most uh, um, critical disaster in our country, especially in Jakarta. 2020 and 2021 in, in Malang, East Java province. Um, yes, and uh, all of those occurrences of disaster um, focus on. Uh, two, two main factors, two main driving factors. Uh, as we know that we have a four uh, rainfall parameters as a triggered factor of sediment related disaster. As you uh, explained to us, yes, we have a cumulative rainfall and also rainfall intensity and also the rainfall duration and perhaps antecedent rainfall events began become another factor that uh, influence the, the uh, disaster related with the water and sediment. And uh, in my opinion, just because um, I try to observe and uh, in Indonesia, particularly in, in, in Malang, because uh, we have uh, uh, a disaster in the early of 2021, in January, February 2021, we have uh, uh, disastrous uh, 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 flash flood in Malang, and uh, the conclusion is that uh, the parameter the, of rainfall, the the most important parameter that affect uh, 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 the the occurrence of uh, flash flood or sediment uh, disaster, is the uh, high intensity of rainfall and uh, uh, long duration. Yes, uh, according to the data from the meteorological agency. Uh, Indonesia, uh, they said that uh, there is a um, shifting. There is a shifting of uh, the pattern of the characteristic of rainfall, particularly in uh, the intensity, the amount of intensity, and also the duration of the rainfall. So, my conclusion is the high intensity of rainfall and duration of rainfall become the most important factor that uh, driving uh, the occurrence of uh, disaster uh, uh, concerning the sediment or flash flood disaster. I think 
Yes, that's my answer, my comment, Singhi. Okay, thank you, Pak Doni. So uh, I can summarize that according to Pak Doni, he observed uh, the previous or past uh, disaster. It is uh, related to the increasing both of intensity and also durations. Okay, uh, thank you, Pak Doni. Let's uh, have some other uh, opinion also. Pak Javan, do you already have some uh, comment also before we move to the next uh, external particip uh, participants? Could you share some ideas or you have some yeah, opinion also regarding the future trend of the uh, climate change in Indonesia, Pak Javan? You just studied the climate change from Taiwan University, <laughs> so you can share us. Okay, Pak Javan, do you have? Please uh, unmute the microphone. Sorry, can you hear my voice now? Yes, it's clear and uh, loud. Thank you, because my uh, I have a little bit problem with my sound. Uh, I saw, uh, good morning, Sensei. Uh, nice to see you. I already contact you for several times, maybe if you uh, remember me. Uh, maybe I have uh, some little comments since I regarding uh, sediment distribution right now, because I saw last time uh, tropical cyclone was shifting from uh, when, uh, as I know, a tropical cyclone is the direction is uh, from the north to the Japan coast. But uh, right now, it already shifting uh, go to downward in the, the equator. And as I know, uh, it have uh, uh, become uh, climate change also and a seasonal impact to Indonesia. And But I still wondering and curious about the impact uh, for sediment compaction in uh, dam, especially in large dam, and also how deflash, uh, deflation or air uh, landslide in the main dam construction if they get uh, like a tropical cyclone or wind attack to the main dam part. Is that also uh, can be studied uh, for the future? and say regarding that problem That's much study regarding uh, that uh, impact for climate and how we uh, prevent and mitigate disaster from wind and climate uh, direct impact to the main term structure I think Uh, do you get it? What I mean, Sensei? I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, maybe I can note also, Pak Javan, uh, instead of the intensity and also rainfall, uh, increase in duration, maybe you outline also there are some structures in the river, maybe could affect also the uh disaster i mean the uh magnitude of the sediment disaster also is that correct yes okay all right thank you pa chatwan so let's move to the other participant please uh from the other participant do you have any comment or suggestion regarding what kind of uh, future potential disaster may happen in our country due to the increasing of uh, rainfall intensity and also duration. Maybe some uh, participant who, who are living in Central or West Java, do you have some observe the recent disaster, landslide disaster? Yeah. Or oh, Pak Fahmi? Pak Fahmi, maybe you have experienced the recent disaster? last uh, February in Kalikonto. Oh, 
thank you Pak Singge. If you don't mind, Sensei, I would like to show you the recent uh, experience with our uh, data in in Brantas, Sensei. I will use my slide. Okay, please, Pak Fahmi, you are welcome. Can you see my slide? Pak Singgi? Yeah, okay. okay. Please continue. Yeah. Uh, I would like to show, this is the example uh, what we face in January and February in Brantas Sensei, this more specific uh, sites. So as we experience that the extreme uh, rainfall is increased its uh, frequency and uh, magnitudes. And for example, in Konto, water sets in the downstream of uh, Silorejo Dam on January 2020 this year, uh, you can see the precipitations uh, that was measured in uh, Silorejo rainfall stations. It's, uh, it's amounted of 45 uh, millimeters in uh, one hour, and it's last almost six hours in durations. And in February, uh, the, the extreme rainfall also occurred again, but the duration is uh, longer. It's almost uh, nine to 10 hours, but the rainfall intensity is a little bit uh, smaller. And we have a problem with the impact of this extreme hydrologic events, especially rainfall. As maybe you know, the situations in, in Brantas very well, especially in uh, Montclute area. And uh, this is the spatial and temporal distribution of eruptions. Uh, I'm talking about the, the source of sediment. This is not a landslide. In fact, that we have also many uh, landslide uh, disasters such as in, in Ponorogo and previously uh, in, in Chamber long time ago that the DBRI teams also have visited. So we think that the sediment deposits in the Kalut volcano already uh, decreased, but mm. for, um, unfortunately, we, we still have a lot of uh, sediments in the, in the stream, as you see in the uh, image in 2019, it looked like the, there is no sediments in the upstream of uh, tributaries that are flowing to the uh, Brantas and Konto. Uh, this is the situations that uh, happened just after the eruption in 2014. I think Sensei also uh, visited this site. As uh, you remember, uh, these uh, pictures and uh, when we visited this area in, in, in January, we saw that uh, there's no uh, sediment deposits in, in uh, the top of Kelut. This is in the crater. And then uh, this is in the area near the crater. Uh, but when we, we have the rainfall on January uh, this year, uh, the, the sediments 
uh, from the stream flow down to the uh, downstream area uh, until the until reach the downstream of uh, Konto uh, before the confluence with the Brantas. Then this caused uh, sediment uh, disaster. The, the debris uh, flow occurred, and then it caused some damages in our uh, infrastructures. And then uh, this is the situations in in Mandalan Sabudem, just the downstream of Sailor uh, Dam, that the debris flow uh, trapped by the Sabudem. Uh, before this uh, situation occurred, we saw that uh, almost almost all of the area already clean, especially by the uh, sand mining. But after the extreme uh, rainfall, the sediment came again and uh, fulfilled this uh, reach of uh, Conto, Conto River. And then the, this is the, the disaster, uh, the damage is caused by the debris flow. And uh, it's in Siman. And then this is just the downstream of the Marbulan uh, Bridge. If you remember when when we visit uh, this place from, from Selorojo, on the way to Kediri. Yeah, so just uh, in one day, extreme uh, rainfall, uh, it's maybe only uh, six hours, and then the sediments, uh, the debris flow to the downstream. It is the, the specific situation we have in, in Brantas, yeah. Um, I'm sorry that I, I cannot uh, show you the problems uh, due to the landslide, but uh, in fact, we also have some uh, landslide problem, but uh, mostly outside of uh, Brantas basins. I think uh, that's what I would like to share to uh, Fujita Sinse and other participants. Thank you, Pak Singe. Thank you, Pak. So, I, I, I forget, Pak Singe, I would like to share the trend in in uh, future since say that we did a study with Jaika uh, team led by Koike Sensei of University of Tokyo. It's uh, already seven years ago that uh, the study revealed that uh, all of the global climate models, if we predict with the increase of what 1.5 uh, degrees Celsius, it will cause that the annual rainfall and the frequency of extreme rainfall will increase 1.1 to 1.2 times higher. Uh, that this uh, the the predictions. Uh, made by the, the JICA teams in, in Brantas. I think we, we now are facing uh, the proof as uh, we feel that the heavy rainfall, the extreme rainfall occurred uh, more frequent than before. I think uh, that's all. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you, Pak Fahmi, for a uh, very valuable also this uh, update information regarding the trend of the climate change and also uh, recent uh, disaster in Kali Uh Let's uh, have some other opinion or suggestion from the uh, participant. Please, uh, who are living in Central or West Java, or maybe in the Jember also, who experienced with such kind of uh, huge uh, landslide or disaster. Do you have any observation there? Uh, 
Bu Ani, Bu Ani from MSD Young Researchers. Do you have any observation data also regarding the recent disaster in Central of Java, Bu Ani? Is Bu Ani here? Okay, not yet. Okay. Can I? Uh, okay. Oh. Okay, please. Yeah, thank you, uh, Pa Tianxi Singi. Sorry. Uh, um, actually, for the body observation, I didn't have any. Uh, I didn't conducted any observation regarding to the uh, climate change in uh, Yogyakarta. But maybe um, for I want to give some opinion about the third point that uh, uh, Professor Fujita explained in the slide about uh, how, what, what kind of future research that we have to, uh, the researcher should conduct in the future. Uh, so I think um, uh, maybe, According to the explanation from uh, Fuzha Sensei, uh, we uh, we are uh, civil engineering and we we mostly concern about the rainfall and also the what's that um, uh, the surface layer of the soil. But maybe we have also concern about the uh, deep soil, uh, the characteristic of the soil in. Uh, uh, such kind of um, maybe we have to collaborate with the geological uh, engineering. So because maybe if uh, for for each condition for each location, um, of especially for deep seated landslide, we have to concern about what kind of characteristic of soil that um, maybe uh, have in the location of the disaster. Because um, maybe for for different soil, so we have to uh, will be uh, will cause different um, different um, warning system. I think that's so we have to combine between the warning system that we only concern about the soil water and the rainfall, but we have to combine it with the uh, characteristic of the uh, rock structure our soil structure large above the sour surface soil that's maybe that's my opinion thank you Patty. okay thank you so much uh Huani, for the valuable uh, suggestion also so uh we have to consider also the soil solume depth and also our rock fractures uh for uh yeah uh, identify the surface erosion followed by the uh, landslide. Thank you, Buani. Maybe some other participant would like to uh, add some comment or uh, you have some suggestion also regarding our uh, questions. How the uh, trend of the movement of the intensity and also durations of the rainfall. Please, if any. Can I, Pak Singgi? Yep, Pak Japan, please. Can I share my screen, Pak Singgi? Yeah, you're welcome. Can you see my slide, Pak Singgi? Yeah, okay, please. I was uh, doing some kind of research regarding the climate uh, in Sanguru because last time uh, we have some discussion with uh, colleagues from Jasiri Taiwan regarding wind uh, and climate effect to the main dam. I think the wind speed and wind direction is changing right now and uh, during uh, that seasonal, it also increased the temperature, also increased rapidly right now. This is uh, 
from this part, we can see the daily maximum uh, temperature is already increasing in the ground level. And when I compare with the wind direction, uh, the sediment also decompose uh, uh, refer to wind direction and uh, climate effect and sun radiation also. But I think it's, it's not very clear right now because uh, we're still under, uh, under uh, study right now, but I think the climate uh, will also affect uh, in the dam, especially in uh, uh, Pranta's catchment, I think, but the end. But we, I think we need uh, put more instrument and uh, analysis regarding this uh, monsoon, tropical cyclone uh, shifting and maybe global warning also regarding uh, the mitigation of disaster, I think. Thank you, Pak Singhi, for uh, let me uh, this opportunity. Okay. Thank you, Pak Japlan, for uh, adding some uh, another factor also regarding the uh, future trends of the disaster also. Please, uh, for the other participant, before we move, uh, to some summary for this uh, answering question number one. Any more comments? In pass also, okay. Okay. Okay, uh, we have some question from Pak Harry. Uh, I read in the box. We would like we would like to know when does the slope refer occur to stopping movement for the bridge flow and change suspended flow to downstream and how the floating the bridge flow means. Okay. okay. Maybe uh, we will answer uh, after uh, this uh, discussion, Pak Eri. Uh, we need uh, some uh, suggestion or comment first regarding the trend of the climate change in our uh, country, especially in uh, Brantas, maybe. Okay, Pak Eri, maybe later we can answer this. Any more uh, comment or suggestion regarding three questions from uh, Professor Fujita, especially the uh, direction of the uh, rainfall intensity and also durations. Okay, if uh, there is no more uh, suggestion, maybe I can summarize some point here, Sensei, for uh, our discussions. So let me share also uh, the PowerPoint I wrote down here. So uh, from some common uh, from the participant, we have that uh, future sediment disaster driven by rainfall uh, here is intensity and also duration from Pak Doni he suggests that the uh, intensity as well as duration also uh, trend to be higher uh, according to the uh, climate change so it's mean intensity and duration is uh, also uh, bring the uh, two important factor in uh, sediment disaster and Pak Javan also add some uh, water, water structure. It might affect the magnitude of a disaster. It already shown also in uh, Fujita Sensei simulation. First, we have landslide and then followed by uh, surface erosion. So maybe uh, according to Pak Javan uh, suggestion, if in this uh, river, they have some uh, structure like uh, sabu or some dam, maybe it also can uh, reduce some uh, disaster to the downstream. And also the climate factor, such as wind and temperature, also an uh, important role also in this uh, disaster. Pak Fahmi also already gave some uh, nice uh, experience regarding the recent uh, 
not landslide, but uh, Davis Pro in Contour River. Uh, it is come from the sediment from the past eruption of Mount Kelot. Yeah, Pak Fahmi, al Pak Fahmi also mentioned that of course there are some uh, local landslide, but uh, not in the Brantas Basin. Yeah, maybe in the uh, slope of the uh, Mount Kelot. And according to this uh, observation, also the sediment deposit outside the uh, river, it's uh, not so high. Uh, already reduced also. And previous study of the JICA uh, led by uh, Kyoto University also, also revealed that the trend of uh, climate change in Brantas will be uh, higher in intensity and also durations. From uh, Ms. Ani, uh, deep seated land site uh, also uh, affected by soil solume and uh, rock fractures. So maybe this uh, magnitude of erosion also uh, up, uh, due to this kind of the type of uh, uh, regional soil solume and uh, rock fraction also. So uh, she suggests also we have to have some uh, early monitoring also or observation in this uh, kind of the parameter. That's uh, maybe we can uh, summarize from uh, discussion from Fujita. So maybe from this answer of the question number one, we can also move to the next uh, question. So what kind of uh, disaster will potentially happen in uh, Indonesia? And then, of course, such kind of uh, uh, research regarding this uh, potential disaster also should be uh, taken into consideration also. That's uh, maybe my uh, summarize. If there are some uh, other uh, missing also, please uh, let me know also. I return back to you, Prof. Puchita. Yeah, okay. okay? <laughs> yeah. Uh... Thank you very much. Uh, please show me uh, your summary. Okay. Ah, thank you very much. And uh, uh, yeah, thank you very much for many comment and uh, idea. And uh, uh, first one is uh, from uh, Mr. Doni, uh, Doni-san. Yep. Uh, this means we are recently uh, intensity and uh, also duration is becoming higher. Or intensity is uh, not so changed, but the duration is uh, increasing. Oh. Uh, 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 how is the uh, situation? The trend. Uh, trend. <laughs> yeah. How is the recent trend, but Tony? Uh, Based on your observation, both of them are increasing or only one of them? Please. Um, <laughs> you can share also some PowerPoint if you have. Yes, yes, thank you, Sensei. Uh, yes, um, according to my, my observation about uh, the characteristic of rainfall, uh, uh, particularly in the intensity and the duration, Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Perhaps uh, about the intensity. Actually, I, I still have uh, no uh, scientific proof, uh, but I I get from some uh, research from some uh, scientific paper about the intensity in Indonesia. But if you uh, ask uh, me about uh, my own experience, I still have no experience in this case. Yeah. So, but uh, my understanding is that when the landslide uh, uh, happened, is uh, um, it will um, started by uh, the 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 high intensity that make uh, like a, a force, both force in the soil layer. So that's uh, my understanding. So. Uh, when I read some papers and uh, some uh, information from the mass media, 
and the information from the uh, disaster mitigation agency uh, in the local or in the central government, they mentioned that uh, the most important factors that must be um, uh, must be focused in uh, in the occurrence of the uh, flash flood or disaster uh, disaster of uh, regarding the sediment disaster and uh, the rainfall intensity and the uh, uh, duration. But uh, I'm I'm sorry I cannot uh, answer. Uh, I'm not sure about the answer whether the intensity is changed. Yeah. Um, um, in in case of in case of uh, landslide occurrence, uh, both of them I think uh, influence, uh, particularly in duration. I think duration yes, <laughs> intensity yeah. maybe I, I still have a, I hypothesized that intensity maybe still are not uh, changed in uh, significantly, but duration changed because of the climate change. So I think I agree with you right now. So this. For me, is uh, I have a chance to develop a research about uh, uh, how far the intensity and duration will influence the yeah, occurrence of plants. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, very yeah. Much. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. And uh, so maybe uh, when we are considering the climate change, uh, the impact of the climate change, uh, how the uh, the trend of the uh, change in the rainfall condition is very important. Right? Yes, exactly. And, uh, so now, uh, uh, for, for example, in Japan, uh, recently we have uh, frequently this kind of rainfall, heavy rainfall. This is the uh, uh, high intensity and uh, long duration. Uh, mm -hmm. Long duration means cumul high cumulative rainfall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yes, uh, yes, yes. So you said intensity and the duration mm -hmm. is very imp important factor, and the intensity times duration is cumulative rainfall. Okay. okay. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So intensity okay. and the duration is very important, and also mm -hmm. intensity and the cumulative rainfall. More like different rainfall. But but almost similar. But in mm -hmm. Japan, uh. Uh, before, we have the uh, very heavy rainfall, we call uh, guerrilla, guerrilla rainfall. Uh, ge understand? Guerrilla. Guerrilla, <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, guerrilla uh, rainfall. Big monkey. Yeah, <laughs> guerrilla yeah. rainfall. A big monkey. Uh, big monkey. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the giants. Uh, that's <laughs> very, very heavy, uh, mm. more than 100 millimeter power, but short duration. Short duration before we have this kind of rainfall, but now duration also uh, becoming long. Intensity high and the duration is long. This is very dangerous situation. Dangerous situation. Yeah, yes. and uh, I just maybe you had uh, you should uh, uh, study the uh, intensity as a change of the intensity and the change in the duration, both. Uh, this is yes, a very yes. Im important point uh, in the research related to climate change, I think. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, and also, uh, yeah, okay, okay please. Uh. Uh, I, I just imagine, uh, is, is there any influence, like uh, any influence from the antecedent precipitation occurrence? In, uh, in the occurrence in the event of uh, landslide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, because yeah, I actually, uh, when I take my, I took my PhD in Miyazaki, mm -hmm. I also mm -hmm. under supervising Professor Satoru Sukiyo. Sukiyo, yes, yes, I know. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then, I already retired. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. And my research location in the upper part of Hitosuse watershed. Uh -huh. Yes, there is a U dam, and they have a, 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 a turbine. Yes, uh -huh. and the electricity. Yes, and uh, my 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 research area is in the upper part, in the ten hectares of the landslide area. Mm -hmm. But I focus in the uh, occurrence of a typhoon. Typhoon mm -hmm. every year. The ty just typhoon every year hit the 
landslide area so it's mm-hmm. getting bigger and bigger bigger mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. around uh, 10 or 15 hectares so i i uh, take that location as my research area but i focus on the um, uh, transportation from the material from the landslide to the river because uh, the main problem in my research area is the turbidity in the mm-hmm. river because uh, if the turbidity uh, not countermeasure, so it will influence the um, the performs performance of the uh, turbine in the dam, it was yeah. dam. Mm-hmm. But, so, but I I didn't focus on the rainfall <laughs> rainfall. No, okay. like that's yeah, yeah. Right. So, so focus yeah. on the generation mm-hmm. of turbidity in the river. So that's thank you, Sensei. Thank you very much. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. <laughs> Okay, may, uh, maybe uh, after the second discussion, and just I want to continue to my give my some comment. Okay. okay. Ah. Yep, Sensei, please continue. And, and now, now I will uh, quit my uh, talk and uh, please uh, move to the second uh, discussion. Okay, so uh, let's move to the next uh, <clears throat> discussions regarding the second question here. Yeah? So do you agree that the future trend of the uh, rainfall intensity as well as uh, duration also will increase during the climate change in Indonesia, right? So let's uh, answer the Question number two from uh, Puchita Sinse regarding uh, these discussions. What kind of hazard occurs in the, if the part of the Indies become much uh, larger? So uh, we can see from, uh, I will share the PowerPoint first. Okay, this one, yeah. So we already have some uh, summary at the time being that the rainfall condition in Indonesia will change in both of duration and intensity, right? So let's see the uh, direction in this uh, snake line, yeah? In this uh, indice, yeah? We have two indices here yeah? introduced by Prof. Uchita. Rainfall intensity will high, uh, will higher than, and also uh, duration. So if we plot in this uh, uh, line, probably it will be like this, right? So all of two in this will increase together. So what kind of hazard could occur if the plot of in this become larger? Uh, we already have three type of hazards according to the first lesson of uh, Fujita Sensei. We will have uh, this one. This is the example of, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, this one, yeah. This is strong and very long duration. So we will have uh, such kind of deep seated landslide and landslide dams. And then if we have only strong, uh, sorry, strong and quick increase, yeah. So we will have uh, many cellular landslide and huge flood. But if we have a quick increase and very strong in local area, maybe type three, so uh, duration is most dominant. We will have the, uh, uh, sorry, the, this is the example number one, yeah. So maybe uh, the duration is uh, dominant, number one. And uh, number two is a part of uh, duration and intensity higher. And then the uh, example number three here, it is the uh, intensity is uh, most dominant. So uh, how do you think in uh, our country will be, yeah? According to uh, which one? Yeah, according to this, this uh, snake line. Please uh, give some opinion or suggestion also.
we already agreeing that uh, both of them are increasing. So how do you think uh, the hazard type could occur in our country? So it is important for the third question. We have to make a roadmap for our uh, research, right? Okay. Pak Fahmi or Pak Doni or other participant, how do you think which type of uh, disaster, sediment disaster, will fre uh, frequently happen in our country according to the answer number one? Yeah, Pak, Pak Singgi. Yeah, Pak Fahmi, please. So, uh, this is mostly influenced by our uh, experience in say yeah as you know well the situations in in Prantas that uh, of course the flood hazards uh, will be more uh, frequently happens in the future but uh, we also consider another problems in uh, Water, water supply, yeah. As we think that the sediments issues will affect our uh, water storage, especially in our reservoir that uh, mostly experience severe sedimentations. Uh, first, the capacity of our reservoir to control uh, floods discharge uh, will be uh, decrease its uh, functions and so also the functions to uh, supply water especially for uh, users in the downstreams as i remember uh, some discussions uh, with uh, Sumi Sensei and uh, Kanto Sensei, as mentioned, that uh, their best friends, maybe you know, uh, Professor Anton Anton Sklis of the uh, uh, Lausanne's Polytechnic of uh, Switzerland, mentioned that the sedimentations in reservoir our reservoir sedimentations is a big a big brother of climate change yeah because we consider that during the extreme rainfall when the erosions occurs and the sediment will trap in the reservoir the capacity will it will decrease and as I mentioned before, the flood control function of the reservoir will be uh, decreased and then the water supply will be decreased. So I think the hazards that uh, happen in the future, it's mostly related to flood hazards and the uh, hazard caused by the water water scarcity if we cannot uh, secure the water supply during especially during the the dry season during the drought that will also uh, increase its frequency in the future due to uh, climate change i think uh, that's all my opinion thank you Thank you, Pak uh, Fahmi. I got your idea also. So, uh, according uh, your observation, also uh, mostly flood, yeah, uh, will be uh, more uh, increase also. So again, I would like to uh, explain. Yeah, there are three type of uh, disaster according to the trend of the increasing input duration and intensity. So this is the example one, two, three. So regarding our uh, answer in the question number one, how do you think which one will be more uh, increased? Yeah, 
Pak Doni, you want to yeah. put comment again? <laughs> thank you, thank you very much for a nice opportunity. Uh, for uh, Professor Fujita Sensei, I would like to confirm for us uh, the definition of soil water index is, in my opinion, is, the, it, is that like a, it quantifies the moisture condition at, at the soil, is right? The soil water index, the definition, because I didn't see in your explanation about uh, what is the definition of the soil water index, so I cannot uh, catch the the if is increase or is decrease for this the impact in uh, the potency the potency of the landslide is type one two or three. Um, I try to uh, browse browsing make up a browsing in the internet and I I I get the definition of soil water index uh, is like uh, it quantifies uh, the moisture condition at various steps in the soil. So if uh, the definition is like uh, what I mentioned before about the soil water index, it means that if the soil water index increase and the rainfall intensity also increase, uh, in my opinion, it will be like a uh, typhoon, typhoon Vipa. Eh? Mm -hmm. So type two, type two, yes, type two volcanic area. Because uh, uh, we know that the storage, uh, soil moisture storage, we have like uh, the, uh, the, the, the term of soil, soil water capacity. So the maximum, the maximum storage of, uh, so the maximum of water uh, stored by the soil. So if the um, rainfall um, it uh, uh, continue to to uh, to happen in a long duration, it means that uh, we have a maximum of storage capacity. So we call it the soil moisture capacity. So uh, in that situation, uh, there is no uh, there is no influence. If uh, the, the 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 increasing of uh, uh, land for duration, because uh, we already have the maximum in the soil moisture storage, so in 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 that case, in in my my understanding that it will be uh, happen in the type 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 two type two of uh, uh, pattern, just oh, strong and quick increase to very strong <laughs> for shallow inland slide and huge flood. That's my my. Opinion. Thank you, uh, Cindy. Thank you, Sensei. Okay. Thank you, Badoni. I think your idea also support uh, Pak Fahmi observation. Mm -hmm. Pak Fahmi mentioned the uh, huge flood uh, also uh, potentially happen in the future due to climate change. Of course, uh, because of climate change, obviously we will have many type of uh, sediment disaster, but in particular, uh, due to the uh, increasing of intensity and uh, duration. So if we plot in this uh, hysteresis phenomena, which kind of, or which type of uh, uh, sediment disaster will be uh, frequently happen. Okay, thank you, Pak Tony. You support Pak Fahmi uh, uh, opinion also. Maybe for the others participant, do you have any idea? which type of uh, uh, yeah, increasing in intensity and soil water index for the future uh, climate change in our country. So we will have a deep seated uh, landslide or we will have more shallow landslide with huge flood or sudden landslide and debris. How do you think? Any more uh, question, uh, a comment, please? No more, yeah. Uh, uh, okay, uh, uh, yep. Uh, just I want to explain just one uh, using my PowerPoint. Yes, and say, uh, yeah. uh, I may, I uh, stop, may yeah. I, uh, okay, so. Okay, 
Uh, anyway, now we are and, uh, discussing about the uh, sediment disaster for example two, uh, type two. And uh, any people uh, just uh, first important thing uh, is just uh, maybe we will understand the uh, landslide will take place uh, uh, if the rainfall intensity is very high. Maybe uh, everybody uh, understand and uh, you have the, some experience. Okay, and uh, if the rainfall intensity is not so high, almost uh, rainfall uh, water is infiltrate in the groundwater, and uh, uh, that water is uh, uh, drainage to the river. So um, the sediment disaster is not so uh, 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 sediment disaster risk is not so high. But if the duration is very long, <coughs> the water is storage, uh, much water is storage in the soil layer to the deep, uh, uh, to the, uh, 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 deep, deep, okay. <laughs> so at that time, so sometime we have the, uh, Large scale landslide. Yeah. Uh, large scale landslide will take place uh, by the uh, uh, much water infiltration. Okay. So, uh, if uh, in this pattern, maybe the deep sea landslide is very dangerous, like right here. And uh, here is a uh, land, shallow landslide and debris flow is very important, uh, is very dangerous. Uh, just Fermi san explain, uh, uh, Fermi san gives some idea for the reservoir management, right? A uh, uh, flood and uh, sedimentation management. Of course, the, uh, uh, for type two, uh, not only the water, but also the sediment, much sediment is flowing in the reservoir, okay? Uh, for the reservoir uh, management, this is very uh, uh, dangerous situation. And uh, flood control and also the uh, sediment, reservoir sedimentation uh, is uh, quickly uh, developed. And uh, that is, uh, uh, we have some problem in the flood control due to the sediment uh, sedimentation like this. Okay. Anyway, just now we need to consider the uh, multi hazard. Multi hazard. Now we are. I'm explaining the run, shallow landslide, deep seated landslide, and debris flow. Uh, these are the single hazard single hazard. But uh, this case, uh, we have to consider the multi hazard, multi hazard. So just I want to explain this point. And uh, just I want to uh, introduce just one example of the sediment disasters in the northern region of Kyushu Island in 20. 17. Okay, just I want to. Uh, Donny san wa, so you, you, 2017, so you, uh, uh, was, uh, were you in Miyazaki? Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I finished my, uh, PhD. Okay, you already. Plus, this is nine. <laughs> <laughs> Already ca uh, came back to okay. it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, okay. So, uh, very heavy rainfall attacked uh, this area. And uh, so, this is a cumulative rainfall distribution. And uh, here is Asakura City in Fukuoka. Is the uh, maximum is five more than 500 
per millimeter, like this. And the some area is, uh, I remember 800 or something, something like this. This is very, uh, uh, and uh, recently we have the uh, local, local heavy rainfall, and uh, this local heavy rainfall continue to stay at the uh, uh, specific area. Don't move. Rainfall, heavy rainfall stay just uh, 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 one area. So that means the, uh, we have the uh, cumulative rainfall uh, much larger like this. Uh, this is a rainfall condition. Uh, so, uh, maximum rainfall intensity is more than around 160, uh, more than 100. This is 100 millimeter. And, uh, just uh, five of us, uh, this, uh, the heavy rainfall more than 100 millimeter per hour continued. Five hours, five hours, okay? This, uh, 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 didn't move, okay? Stay, just one part, okay? As a result, cumulative rainfall is something like this, okay? This is uh, just type two, type two. Firstly, uh, high risk condition of landslide occurrence continues for more than five hours. So uh, this is a high intensity time. Uh, the uh, high risk condition of landslide and debris flow. Okay. Continue for five hours. Yeah. So as a result, uh, many places we uh, landslide took place. So uh, as a result, large number of landslides took place. Okay. So that means there are too much sediment production and too much woody debris production. Uh, woody debris also produced as well as sediment. Yeah. Sediment and woody debris uh, are produced. And uh, Cumulative rainfall is very large. That is, means a large water discharge in the river. In the river. So, uh, flood discharge is very large. That means the uh, uh, active sediment movement. Okay? Sediment transport is very active due to the large water discharge. And also the uh, channel width is extended, okay, due to the uh, high water discharge. Okay, so active sediment movement and widening of channel flow, channel uh, river. So uh, this means the uh, erosion of bank uh, or side of the river is very active. As a result, too much woody debris. So in Japan, uh, many trees are growing uh, beside the river. Okay. So that river uh, and the woody uh, wood, uh, tree was flowed. Okay. Too much woody debris is produced. Uh, this is the location of the landslide part. Uh, Asakura city is here. This is Chikugo River. This is big river in the Kyushu Island. Uh, this is a tributaries. Okay. Uh, this red part is uh, landslide. Landslide. You can understand many, many places uh, landslide took place. Okay. So I said the, uh, this. And also the water discharge is very large. Uh, this is a flood inundation area. Flood inundation. Here, so maybe you can understand, uh, not, not, uh, we, we had the, uh, uh, 
also the flood disaster, as well as sediment disaster. Landslide, debris flow, and the flood inundation. Okay? So, so that is a multi hazard condition. Okay? Uh, to mitigate sediment, to mitigate the natural disaster, uh, if the uh, single, it is, if it is single hazard, maybe we focus on the, uh, maybe this single hazard, uh, for example, landslide was debris. But this case, landslide and debris flow and the flood inundation took place uh, simultaneously or sequentially, okay? We have to consider the uh, all hazard. Yeah. And also the, I said the, uh, we had much driftwood, okay? Sediment and water and driftwood. We have to uh, control these three material, right? And uh, sediment, too much sediment is produced and uh, uh, water discharge is, is very high. And uh, that produced sediment is transported to the downstream. Okay, right. So, as I said, I explained large scale flood sediment inundation associated with extreme sediment uh, random. So we had this kind of hazard. Uh, this is the, uh, fortunately, unfortunately, this, I took a picture, um, uh, around three months later of the, uh, disaster. So government, uh, remove almost sediment, but, after the uh, after the uh, rainfall, uh, this area is covered by the uh, much sediment. So uh, this phenomena, I said such a phenomena frequently occurred in Japan, uh, particularly in the case uh, type two. Okay. Anyway, a uh, multi hazard occurrence process is like this, and we I need to uh, uh, consider the multi hazard uh, simultaneous and sequential shallow landslide for a wide area. Wide area. Uh, this. Okay, for wide area, uh, sequential landslide and debris flow place. The active sediment movement by large water discharge because uh, cumulative rainfall is very high. So that means the uh, water discharge is very high. That means the uh, sediment transport could be very active. So that means the, uh, this sediment is transported to the uh, downstream with the uh, mild a slope, I uh, uh, That is a, a alluvial fan, okay? So that sediment uh, deposit too much. And uh, uh, this sediment deposition makes inundation very severe, okay? And also the uh, sediment is uh, inundated as well as uh, sediment as well as water is inundated. So, uh, maybe you can understand uh, the, uh, the type, type two, uh, very severe, uh, phenomena happen in the whole water shed. Uh, just, uh, this is my, uh, idea, uh, my, uh, comment for the, uh, sediment disaster uh, in the type two. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Sensei, for the uh, conclusion there. So before we uh, finish, because time is almost over, yeah, already 11, uh, we have uh, one question remaining, need to be answered. The question is uh, from Baheri, 
uh, first is when does the slope refer change? Uh, I mean, the when the does when does slope refer occur to stop the movement for the free flow and change into suspended flow? Yeah, uh, maybe please uh, answer also when the uh, the free flow change into uh, maybe suspended flow or because of some uh, slope uh, changes yeah, from the upstream to downstream. And the second, how the floating to bridge flow mean? Yeah, I think it's already uh, answered also, Pak Eri, yeah, we can see some debris from uh, wood, driftwood, yeah, uh, followed uh, by this uh, uh, debris flow also. Prof. Mujita, could you answer uh, when the uh, movement of the bridge flow become changing into suspended flow. When? When or where? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, yes. Uh, generally, uh, uh, in the steep channel, more than 50, degree. uh, 15 degrees. 15. Okay. That is the uh, uh, occurrence region of the debris flow. Okay. And the uh, debris flow is uh, uh, flowing down, and uh, maybe that is a deposit uh, in the mild channel, uh, mild slope, uh, mm. around five degree or something like this. Five degree. Okay. Just once that uh, sediment deposit, but uh, 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 na, na da, eh, to, the water is flowing down. And uh, eroding the material, okay. And uh, yep. some some part of debris flow continue to flow down yep. as a suspended road and a bed road. Maybe uh, just when uh, this question is very difficult to answer. Okay, uh, this is a, a continuous phenomena. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, just uh, in the debris flow is content the water and the fine sediment and the coarser material, coarser uh, material, and uh, all together is moving. Okay, that is uh, uh, on the uh, around five degree, uh, and the, the slope uh, five degree that. Debris flow is uh, is uh, gradually uh, stopping and depositing, yep. and uh, so uh, some uh, some fine sediment and water is uh, flowing down continuously. Okay, and also the after the debris flow, only the flood is uh, coming. Yep. Uh, generally, uh, uh, debris flow is uh, just uh, in the front of the debris flow containing the uh, very large stone and uh, something like this. But the, uh, yeah. uh, to, uh, to the trail, the trail uh, to the uh, backside, backside mm. is not containing the uh, uh, large stone, and the con concentration is very low. OK? Uh, this is debris flow. The front is concentration is very high, but the backside is concentration is small. OK? So that is a flowing and a deposit. And uh, then the uh, uh, flood with uh, low concentration is uh, coming. And that is uh, eroding the uh, material and uh, uh, suspended road and the bed road is moving down. Like this. Okay. Yeah, thank you, uh, 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 Prof. Uchita. Is it uh, okay, Pak Harry? I think it's uh, changing from uh, 15 to 5 degrees. And of course, it is a continuous phenomena. So, yeah, uh, in general, the answer is like that. And uh, about the floating debris, I think we can see some uh, debris wood also uh, brought in the debris flow due to the landslide. Thank you, uh, 
all of participants and also Prof. Ujita for very nice uh, sharing knowledge and also uh, some uh, discussion also in this uh, late, uh, if, uh, late morning, yeah, uh, almost afternoon. And for uh, time is, all, is over, but I can summarize some point here, some important point that uh, we have already open our mind. Of course, uh, due to the climate change, obviously there are some type of uh, disaster according to the sediment disaster. But uh, specifically, or uh, particularly, we can identify uh, with uh, indices, yeah, two indices introduced by Prof. Pujita. So, uh, Bapak Bapak or Ibu Ibu can uh, apply these uh, indices also in uh, their own regions which uh, pattern will be uh, will be more frequent in the uh, future uh, don't forget also we will have a second third and fourth series of lecture also uh, continuing this uh, uh, presentation uh, thank you pak fujita prof fujita i uh, think time is up i should return to the uh, uh, master of ceremony for today uh, class. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, all of participants. I return back to uh, Bu Rahma. Thank you, please, Bu Rahma. Thank you, Mr. Diansi Singhi. Okay. Uh, now, and thank you, Professor Masaharu Fujita, from a yeah. wonderful and insightful discussion about disaster mitigation due to the climate change. Now, before we close this uh, program today, uh, could you open your camera to all the participants and we will take a picture uh, to this class. So please, please open your camera. Uh, wait a minute. <laughs> okay, same, same, same. <laughs> very nice. Okay. Okay. Can you give me a smile? Okay, one, two, three, and smile. Okay, next slide, wait minutes. Okay, one, two, three, and smile. Oh, very nice. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Vegeta uh, Sensei. Now, and now I would like to remind all the participants to fill the form for the today attendance to get the certificate and in the end of the program and on behalf of the committee of this program uh, we would like to thank you to professor uh, masaharu fujita and all the participants for joining us today and see you the next schedule yeah. thank you for all the attending we hope you have a learn and enjoy this course. So, bye bye. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih. 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 Ter